Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fleckdis channel. It's no secret how airplanes get built. But how do you move wings, engines, and sections of the fuselage from one place to another? If you're a multinational aerospace company Airbus, you use the Beluga XL. Designated the A330-743L, the XL is actually the second aircraft to carry the Beluga name. There are just six in total, each of which is 207 feet long and boasts a maximum takeoff weight of 500,000 pounds. The massive cargo hold, which bulges above the main fuselage, is 78,000 cubic feet and 29 feet in diameter. Even when fully loaded, the Beluga XL can travel 2,600 miles at a time and reach speeds of around 458 miles per hour. With its increased capacity, the Beluga XL can carry two A350 XWB wings or nearly complete sections of an aircraft's fuselage. This makes it integral to Airbus's massive intercontinental assembly operation. Creating an oversized cargo aircraft like the Beluga XL requires a lot of coordination between various facilities. Appropriately, many parts were delivered by the previous Beluga iteration, the A300-600ST. The lower fuselage was assembled on the standard A330 line, then delivered to another factory in Toulouse, France. Most of the components, such as the wings, nose, and upper cargo bay door, were prefabricated and simply needed to be fit together. However, the bulbous top section had to be created using traditional framing techniques. This would eventually go on to make up the massive cargo bay that makes the Beluga XL so distinct. During this year-long process, the tail, nose, and other sections were also fitted into place. The resulting aircraft is one of the largest aircraft ever created by the company. But just because the aircraft is assembled doesn't mean it's ready. Techs still need to add paint and other external details. In this case, Airbus has decided to lean into the name Beluga and create a unique face paint job for the XL. One that makes it look almost exactly like the whale whose name it bears. The first Beluga XL underwent its initial test flight on July 19, 2018. A team of five experienced test pilots was tasked with taking the Beluga into the air above the toulouse blagnac airport in France. Meanwhile, a team of engineers and analysts carefully monitored the plane's various systems from the ground. Despite the plane's size and bulk, it is powered by only two engines. 
Though they can generate 71,000 pounds of thrust each, they seem dwarfed by the massive fame of the XL. The flight proved a remarkable success from takeoff to landing. And the Beluga XL officially joined the Airbus fleet. There are now a total of six Beluga XL aircraft in service. They fly alongside the previous versions to better facilitate the movement of oversized parts for Airbus and third-party companies. Airbus's primary competitor is Boeing Company, based in the United States. Before the introduction of the Beluga XL, Boeing had created its own large-scale cargo freighter, which is dubbed the Dreamlifter. Modeled off of the frame of a 747-400 airliner, The Dreamlifter was specifically designed to haul parts of the company's new 787 Dreamliner. Like the Beluga, the Dreamlifter features a bulbous fuselage. However, it is 235 feet long and 70 feet high and bears a wingspan of 211 feet, making it the larger of the two planes. Boeing is by no means new to the construction of large-scale aircraft. Since 1991, the company's military division has produced the Boeing C-17 Globemaster III. A massive cargo plane capable of carrying nearly 171,000 pounds of troops, vehicles, or supplies. The C-17 is a rugged and versatile craft specifically designed to haul cargo and personnel to and from military outposts of all types and sizes. It is 174 feet long and boasts a wingspan of 169 feet, making it one of the larger cargo aircraft in the U.S. fleet. The plane is powered by four massive Pratt & Whitney turbofans, producing around 40,000 pounds of thrust each. In total, the aircraft is capable of transporting 102 paratroopers, or 134 troops, 18,463 L-Master pallets, and even a full M1 Abrams tank. The C-17's history dates back to the 1970s, when the U.S. military was looking to replace the Lockheed C-130 Hercules. After many proposals, the C-17 was chosen as the best possible successor. After years of innovation and delays, production officially began in 1990. Since then, production has utilized more or less the same process. Over the years, 279 have been constructed at Boeing's Long Beach, California facility. As with the Beluga XL, the process involves joining huge prefabricated parts. 
These include different sections of the fuselage, the wings, and the nose. This is accomplished with very precise, heavy-lifting cranes that carefully and slowly maneuver the sections into place over the course of hours. Once in place, the sections are carefully joined and welded to create the final aircraft. Over the years, the C-17 has undergone various improvements and upgrades. Multiple variants have also been created so that the plane can be better suited to specific jobs or missions. These repairs and renovations are completed at Boeing's San Antonio, Texas facility, which happens to be the largest freestanding hangar in the world at 1,760 feet. Here, C-17s from a variety of organizations are stripped down, upgraded, and improved before being put back together and shipped off to their respective owners. Afterward, each plane undergoes a rigorous test flight to ensure all the new systems operate properly. The last step in ensuring the C-17 remains ready to perform its duties for military worldwide is on-site preventative maintenance. Cargo aircraft are among the most mission-heavy planes in the modern military. And it's important for both interior and exterior components to be cleaned and restored regularly. This helps prevent corrosion from oil and other synthetic materials, as well as debris, ice, and dust encountered while in the air. These sorts of cleanings take place roughly every six months and include a detailed inspection to make sure everything on the aircraft is operating properly. At less frequent intervals, nearly every part of the C-17 will be removed, repaired, and replaced, from the tires and electrical parts to the massive engines. One of the main reasons the C-17 has proven so popular among global air forces is its unique ability to take off and land on a variety of runways, including some as short as 3,500 feet long and as narrow as 90 feet wide. This capability stems from several design features, such as the plane's high lift wing design, slats, and externally blown flaps. Thanks to these short interval takeoffs and landings, the Globemaster can truly live up to its name, supplying and evacuating a variety of austere locations that other large scale cargo planes could not approach. Still, it's their sheer size that makes them appear so formidable. At certain events, such as Mobility Guardian in Washington State, the United States military will parade its largest aircraft in an exercise known as an elephant walk. Though it is visually impressive, it does have an actual purpose. That is, to test the abilities of the mobility air forces to execute rapid missions in a variety of different environments. The planes taxi in a straight line before taking off one by one. 
Elephant walk events take a lot of coordination and preparation, especially when you consider the size of the participating aircraft. The result is nothing short of stunning, with dozens of cargo planes and their crews getting a chance to show off their skills and capabilities. In the end, it's important to realize how transport and cargo aircraft are essential to the missions of private companies and militaries. Without the ability to quickly get supplies, troops, and parts from one place to another, even the best planes can quickly fall apart. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.